What is up my creative Virgonians, my name's Virgo, you can call me V, and welcome back to Jurassic World Alive! We are joining you, oh wait, let's try that again, we're here for a different type of episode. We're talking about an update that is coming, update 1.8, we even have a release date, hopefully. We know how um, last update, uh, Ludia unfortunately had a bit of an issue where they couldn't roll it out straight away. May not happen again, but that's why I'm saying hopefully to be safe but thank you all so much for joining me today i really do appreciate that we're going to go ahead and look at the update um in regards to what it's bringing we're also going to look at well release don't we're also going to look at um what i'm most excited for which shock horror i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are for as well um and some things that i'm a bit bummed about and will probably be hated for but we'll come on to that very very shortly so let's go ahead and go to safari so as you can see, this is the update. So if you go on to, um, I think it's actually visible on Jurassic World Alive. If you go on to news, I could be wrong. If not, you can go on to uh, Jurassic World Alive's Twitter or their Instagram, or if you already have their, um, or, or Facebook, or if you already have access to their um, their forums, it's on their forums. So you can check it out on there, funnily enough. But there's a brief overview which covers sanctuaries, or oh, seasonal PvP. I'm not good enough, so I don't really care. Geolocation and improved AR. Meh. Ability updates. Hmm. New abilities. Oh, new hybrids. Oh. Core mechanic update. Eh? Not too sure. I don't think I've read over that properly, so we'll check. Creature updates. Yeah. And of course, misc and bug fixes. Oh, very good. So, before going anywhere, we're going to look at my favourite is off bat the first one so i'd like to know what your favorite is about this whole update and that is of course a sanctuaries so sanctuaries is um a new concept that they're bringing into the game it's like a like a strike tower so it's got a physical locate well it's a physical location you can't see it in person but it's got a i think it's a metaphysical or virtual stamp so if i say there was one two doors down that if you came and were near me and you go oh wait I see it too. And you can put um, dinosaurs in it and you can feed them. I think you can play with them too. I, I'm not too sure. It said mentions toys, so I assume so. Um, and yeah, it's going to have really, really interesting elements because you get DNA from it. You can upgrade the sanctuaries, which means more people can put more things in. But the most, most, most interesting factor for this is you can share it with your alliance. And if someone sticks it in there as well, guess what? You can go to see where your dinosaur is, care for it, and other people from your alliance or other people in general will care for it too obviously if they care for it then i don't think you get any bonus it doesn't suggest so it, it it doesn't i don't think that's the case but if let's say for example i went all right i'm gonna stick in my um dimetrodon and i say to someone else stick your dimetrodon in too double dimetrodon rewards opportunity but if you say oh, i want dimetrodon and i want draco rex Oh, I'll stick in Dimetrodon, you stick in Draco Rex. It's an incredible opportunity to really, really work with your alliance. And I'm very much, because I'm part of the Beavers and Powers Alliance, I'm very much looking forward to seeing how Beaver, um, a lot of the big hitters like Wade, um, Vineyard, there's a lot of others, uh, out Murph, and loads of others, but I'm not just going to say everyone, because trust me, that's 50 people. Um, take away me, take away the three people I've just mentioned, that's still like, what, 46. So... <laughs> Still up. But yeah, that's going to be a really, really interesting thing. You can collect food and toy boxes and supply drops and interactions in the free incubator in the store. Awesome. Some people are thinking, like myself, there's probably a point where we may have to buy some. Not against it. Not against it at all. But partially am. It's very confusing because it's, it's no different to having an incubator or paying for an epic cent, for example. It's, it's similar in concept. Just very much refined getting what you want. If you go for a common then you are going to get uh, more DNA if you went for a rare than if you went for a, um epic. It's it's pretty, it's pretty standard, really. Um, you can't put in hybrids, you can't put in Cenozoics, you can't put in Pterosaurs. That is to be expected at the very least. I mean, let's face it, that, that's a whole new level of animation, different exhibit and stuff, and that, that like, the hybrids is a no-go because that's just going to be easy for everyone to get loads of everything then. But moving away from that, they're probably going to introduce it at some point anyway no that's a lie they're moving away from the hybrids the hybrids they won't touch the, the cenozoic and the pterosaurs they confirm they're working on um so leveling up the sanctuary is really good it resets every two weeks which is cool that's absolutely fine because then you've got to start from again otherwise wherever you go you'll be seeing sanctuaries filled to the brim leveled up max and it's just there's no 
recurring requirement as such. You, you just be looking around. It's like a wasteland just full of full sanctuaries. It's nah, not great. I also like the fact this is coming out just after Jurassic World Evolution's Claire Sanctuary DLC got. I, I feel like there's something there. There's got to be something there for that to happen, but I don't know. So Sanctuary, awesome. Uh, as you can see, they stay there for 48 hours. When they come back, they give you some DNA. If, for example, um, you they weren't there for the full for, uh, 48 hours because part of the time ticked over into the reset, then you'll get it proportional to what it was rather than getting the full amount or nothing, which is actually probably the best way to go about it. So if you were there only for 24 hours, then you're going to get half the reward you would have got if you'd have um, kept them longer. Obviously, you can't just keep chaining them and feeding them because guess what? They ain't going to be hungry for three times. The first time, you're going to get full. Second time, you're going to get less. Third time, you're going to get the minimal amount. And that makes sense. Like, if you feed them, they're not going to be hungry. They're going to be stuffed. In which case, you can feed them to something else. Problem solved, I guess. Just thinking pragmatically. Just saying. And um, this is pretty great. <laughs> Obviously, as well, um, there's going to be a lot of elements of trying to find them. I'm quite lucky. I think there's a fair few people that play it in my area, but not a super amount. So if I find one, you know, up and down the street, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine. Um, so they reset every two weeks. Also, just a forewarning, if I can't control my volume and I go quiet and then loud, I have an ear infection. So, as it turns out, I've had it for a while, So, which is why I was thinking, why have I been feeling sick? Why have I been feeling tired? And after getting told to go to the doctors, which I admit, in hindsight, I should have done a lot sooner, looked at my left ear, fine. Looked at my right ear, oh, oh, gosh, not fine. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And then, yeah, that's fun. So, I've got to squirt stuff into it and I can't really fully capture volume. Well, I could in the first place, but hey. You can only have a maximum of four creatures at a time. They can't be in your strike team. Obviously, that's going to be fine for pretty much everyone who's mid to high level because most of the time, that's just going to be hybrids in their team anyway. So they're not going to need to put them in there. They're just going to need to put the ingredients in there. So that's pretty much Sanctuary in a nutshell. There are certainly loads of other details. You can check that out on here. You can check out the fact that they've also attached the frequently asked questions, and that's going to cover a lot of stuff. But... Overall, out of everything in this, it's my favourite. The only thing I wasn't too happy about this update, <laughs> that Sanctuaries didn't ruin for me, but made me go, ah, is I thought Gyrospheres were coming. Spoiler alert, they are, but from what we can tell, they're going to be toys, which means the Indominus Rex is probably going to try and just smash it or play kickball with it or something. I do call it kickball, not football, because I'm not referring to football, I'm referring to kickball. A completely different niche, if you will. I just went, like, full, full posh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right um so yeah as you can see all the details blah 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 seasonal pvp right so for those that are aware pvp seasons were kind of a thing and then they weren't a thing and it got very confusing and to be quite frank i'm not good enough for them anyway however there are things i like about this three new arenas which means hopefully more dinosaurs we can get in our battle incubators yes or they might split them up which is a big no um a new season every different every month um, with different prizes based on trophy count and rank. Scoring will be based on the highest score reached. So if I hit 4,000, because I was just getting really lucky five games in a row, I'm going to get that. I will be counted as 4,000, which is awesome. Also, um, I don't know if it's mentioned here or elsewhere. Um, I'm not too sure it doesn't really state. But essentially... If you go down a rank, um, so let's say I was in um, Lockwood and I went down one, rather than going down one instantly if I went just drop below, I think it's a sort of certain threshold. I don't know if it's 40 or 50 in memory. I need to check that. Yep. Uh, in the one well, gained or lost per match is 40, and the max minimum gained or lost per match is 20. So, oh, so in 1.8, the maximum trophies gained or lost per match is 40. And the minimum gained... Oh, right, so it'll be between 20 and 40. That means we go from a factor of 5, so from 10 to 50 to a factor of times 2. Right, okay. That makes sense. That's a lot better, actually, because I, I can't tell you the amount of insane amount of drops we've had. Um, so in, in one percent of you, but other players would win only 10 points, but would lose 50. The missing means they would need to win five times more than they could. So they've actually balanced that, because I remember just dropping, like, I'd win four games in a row. I'd lose two games and I'd be lower than when I started and I was like seems legit but they fixed that which is awesome very very happy about that so geolocation and improved AR small migration to keep neighborhoods balanced Ooh, 
they may start moving my supply drops that I've got like 20,000 near me. Not happy about that. Didn't really read that the first time. In the lab, many creatures now have animation to create even more photos and fun photos and videos. So there's a working flying. We'll have them in the future. Understandable. I mean, it takes time. Let's face it. They're a completely different thing to animate. So ability updates. Dodge overhaul. Now this. Not too pleased about. So they recently introduced new dodge based um, hybrids. They recently sort of killed Monomius and now not killed it and then killed it in the same update. But Proserathomimus really is going to be the sufferer of this as well as the Indoraptor. Technically, maybe not even the Indoraptor because he can put in two good hits before he goes down unless he's against a Thralidosaur because instant charge will kill you after it's already gone for an impact, that is. So it's basically meaning that if you get a dodge, which if you've watched my videos, the most, well, the most recent video, two recent videos, you'll know my dodge chance is pretty much 20% chance of success anyway. On top of that, it doesn't fully dodge. Well, it does. Imagine you're being stabbed, but you don't jump fully out the way, so instead you get grazed. That's pretty much what's going to happen. So... It seems that providing a plethora of nullification creatures and abilities improvements so did not entice them to field these creatures in their strike team in order to use such tools against dodgers. Or maybe incentivize those. Just saying, not digging against them. I love this update and how it looks, but coming on to that. So, we sincerely hope to give everyone specific tools we wanted to counter that mechanic totally to further reduce the influence of randomness. Which, it's not random. I'm screwed all the time. It's just luck. <laughs> it is random, to clarify. You decided to let some damage go through even when your creature successfully, even when your creature successfully dodges. So, y'all remember my 20% chance of, well, it was actually, that's a lie, it was about 33% chance of um, dodging. Okay. Take that into account. So 66% of the time, I'm taking full damage. 33% of the time, I'm taking whatever it is. So, this bit dodge means we're now always automatically 66.7% instead of 100%. So, Proserathomimus hasn't got a lot of health, so he's pretty much screwed at this point. But if I miss one dodge with my Indoraptor against a Thralidosaur, and he does, say, for example, what, 1700 and a half, 2500, I've got a good 4200 Indoraptor, okay? He's then got 1500 or so health. Cool, right? He goes for Rampage and crits. Let's say that goes up to what? I know that it, the ink crit is now different now, so we'll go over that in a second. So he's got a crit of, what, 2550? He's gone with double damage, though. So 17... Oh, I can't remember what I said. Uh, I said 1800. No, I said 1700. It's great. We'll say 1700. So he's gone up to 2400. No, it was 1700. There we go, yeah. 3400 base attack. So he's gone for 3400 as a rampage. And then he crits. That's 1.25 times it. So... 3400 times, uh, what's that, so... 4250, give or take. And then we take a third off. So we're then left with like two, 300 health. Even if we dodged. If we dodged. At this point they should be like, yeah, dodge is a 100% chance, but you take 66.67%. But then the point is, then that's just basically shields. So these are bad shields <laughs> that can't be pierced, I guess. But they gave they gave stuff like Ren, not random. They gave Definite Strike and the other one that I can't remember the name of. But now they've just gone and killed Cloak. Why do you have to do my baby like this? Also, just in case you haven't aware, I should have made it aware at the beginning. I'll mention the release date at the end because, well, keep viewers. <laughs> not that that's going to happen, but, you know. Armor piercing impact. Cool down, reduced to one. Interesting. New abilities. Decelerate and counter. Cool. Fun. Deliberate prowl. Dodge 50%. Cleanse self. Increase crit chance. Notice that this ability does not have priority. That's fine. So it's a support move for the next turn, pretty much. That's, that's, that's reasonable. Nullifying rampage. Removes positive effect. Deals two times damage i don't know who's getting that one because i want to know because that's incredible for taking out indos both of them and all well, well, three if you want to count well the i don't know yeah Erlen Dominus too um plus the indos that's insane that's absolutely insane so 
that's great. And shield decelerating strike, so shield, and you slow him down, which means you shield on the next turn, but that doesn't really make a difference, to be quite frank. That, that just, I want to say a pointless move, but when a young gets something that's got smashing attacks, it doesn't make a difference. New hybrids. Fun time. I was very wrong. I was wrong on pretty much all of these. Number one, I expected a um, Carnotaurus, I can't remember what it's called, the Puritosaurus Carnotaurus hybrid, I can't remember what it's called. Expecting that. I was also expecting Smilodon and Marsupial Lions, so I thought they were just going to go, here you go, here's two Cenozoics. Blah. Makes most sense, right? No. Smilocephalosaurus. <laughs> Smilodon, Pachycephalosaurus. Don't think I've got many Pachycephalosaurus, so that's a no for me, which is a bit of a shame. Its moves are pretty unique, um, so it can sort of, uh, ones that you've just lopped, swap in stun, so you can swap it de deliberately, um, that's pretty great. It doesn't have a dodging pouncer, so I can't remember, I can't remember quite well. <laughs> so, deliberate prowl, that's pretty freaking useful. Precise pounce, ooh, I thought this one had a counter attack, I'm very wrong. <laughs> no, it's Diplovinator. So this one. Diplocalus Gen 2, need to check how many of those I've got, and Concavenator. Finally! For your information, this is what they look like. Um, Diplocalus is the one that everyone thought was a fish, but you can see tiny little feetsies right there. Don't know if you're seeing it, but right there, just beneath, uh, just above the little, um, I want to call it a fluke on the back, but you know what I mean. Um, that's the Smilodon. Oh, no! Okay, that's good. Um, and that's the rest of them, how they look, obviously. They'll be in the thumbnail because I'm, well, clickbaity. But, you know. So, Diplomatonator is a legendary distracting and defense sh um, shattering counter-attacker. Awesome. So, this guy is going to be part of the counter meta if you partake in that. I know some people do. It's not a massive one, to be fair. So, combines distraction with anti-tank abilities. So, it could be pretty damn good for a Trico. I'm not going to lie to you. That's pretty useful, obviously, apart from the instant distraction. Don't think he has anything to get rid of it as a distraction, though. Um, so it has definite strike, instant distraction, distracting impact, and distracting rampage, and a precise shattering counterattack, which means... Does precise... I, I don't know the difference between precise and definite. One of them removes the cloak and shield and stuff. If that's the case, well, I mean, it's shattering, so it's going to remove the uh, shields anyway, but I'm not too sure. Regardless, really useful against the um, sort of cloaks. Really useful against Trico. Potentially, definitely useful against the Raladosaur. So pretty, pretty damn good for a legendary. Not going to lie, as unique, I'd accept that. <laughs> With better stats though, but I'd accept it. The Sungaya, Sungaya, legendary self spealing, self healing, speed control attacker, uh, counter attacker. How can one improve Miragia? Don't ask that question. That thing has plagued PvP for a while now. Do not ask how you can improve it. It is the devil. So, it's a difficult task, but Dr. Wu's team have been mixing its genes with Sungra Terrus. It's a nightmare. I bet it is. Legendary resilient creature that has Mirage's parents um, attack, as well as the shielded accelerating strike and regeneration abilities with <laughs> average health. It has access to the accelerating counter. Oh. And Thagomizer, in order to keep up the shield advantage. With the, um, the Sunday Egg Strike and the counter triggering in the same turn, it's possible to reduce your opponent's speed to zero. Right, does that mean it's the same as reducing their attack to zero? Because they have a zero count, they cannot move? That would be interesting, like almost like a stun without a stun. Um, but it also boosts a moderate 15% um, armor. Armor, not super useful in the later games where I'm at right now. Could be useful. So, thinking... Um, cleanse with regeneration, obviously going to do that. Uh, I could bet he's high damage attacks, pretty reasonable. Um, although health boost, just saying, and the armor. Yeah. Um, now this one I'm really excited for. I haven't even checked my Quetzalcoatlus, which I need to do. But Terra Quetzal, legendary evasive, mobile and shielded counter attacker. Awesome. And, um, it's a legendary, but I'd prefer it to have been a unique, but hey. So, combined with those abilities, um, Pteranodon and Quetzalcoatlus, it has ability to superiority strike, eh. Long protection, eh. Nullifying impact, very much needed. An impact and run, it swoops to avoid, uh, to avoid imprecise blows with swap and dodge, and 
counters them with its armor piercing counter attack. So if you swapped in, it's got dodge and it's got um, counter attack. Armor piercing. So if they've got a shield, then maybe not that great. But if you've got its attack very high, that could be a really, really useful thing. Um, it says here you'll need to mix purpose creatures for yourself. Armor protects against its active abilities. It's counter attacked, counter like intuitive with its counter attack. So it can't do anything like damage off beat, but it's counter attackable. So you need to be able to kill it quickly or distract it. Just saying. Kana Katakus. So combining Orku's, China's Wirosaurus genes with that of a pure. No, Puritaurus was a hybrid. I wasn't wrong. How did I not pick up on that earlier? Anyway, Wirosaurus. Don't know how much I've got of those. I don't think I've got loads. Wait, no, I might. Is it unique or is it legendary? No, it's legendary. I should have enough. Oh. I've also got loads of potential Puritosaurus. So this thing is a all-purpose creature that can deal with tanks, dodges, speedy creatures, and can reduce fierce opponents' da damage for a turn. Puritosaurus was pretty broken as it was. <laughs> for an epic! Same as Proserathomimus, but hey. Um... So, while also having a speed advantage, district distraction removal, the superiority strike, useful, yeah, it's pretty much useful against, well, a lot of things. Um, so, I haven't really read through this properly, as you can probably tell, but does he have, yep, yeah, and a greater rending counterattack, and thanks to its DNA, it has 20% armour. Wow. It can take out pretty much anything in three turns or so because of its greater rending counterattack. I think that's like 30% damage, I guess, so because it's saying three turns. That's insane. Right. So you just get high health, let it retaliate. So that's nuts. Whew. Um, immu Unique immune speed. So this is our Dentist Maxima, which I believe is the, yeah, it's the sauropod. Which is the um, long neck and point tooth super hybrid from Argentina. How can a super hybrid be from one particular location? Thanks to its added on to or DNA mixed with the addition of a Brachiosaurus. Is it because it's Argentinosaurus mixed with Brachiosaurus? Is it Ardontosaurus, which is an Argentinosaurus hybrid already? I'm not too sure, guys. But um, it's pretty nuts. It's got. It's unique in the fact that it's immune, as a sauropod immune, speed control. Bruiser and anti-tank, it's pretty much nuts. Instant invincibility, not that great, let's face it, when it comes to the Trico, um, Thor. Trico has a defense shattering. As it turns out, quite a lot of things have defense shattering now. Um, Quetzalcorium, um, this one looks really, really interesting in regards to, um, well, its appearance. Because it's no longer flying. <laughs> I'm hoping it's a wyvern, please. Please let it be a wyvern. That'd be amazing. Um, Quetzalcorium, unique, evasive, and shielded. I didn't realize how long this video is. We need to wrap up soon. So basically, it's a unique, evasive, and shielded, fast damage dealer. Doubles down the da dodging aspect. Quetzalcorium, Tango, Tango Calorius, that one. Finally being used. And the Terra Quetzal. Yes. Awesome. Sounds amazing. Can't wait. Core mechanic update. Crit multiplier is no longer 1.5 times. What? I know, right? It's now 1.2 times. However, that um, reduces the influence of RNG, which makes sense because a lot of people do bank on that RNG. However, on the back of it, for people who are suffering from crit um, reduction, basically things that had a high crit multiplier, have got more attack, which includes Allocinosaurus, which I believe has actually got a higher attack than Theranodosaurus. We're just going to quickly skim through this just to check. Theranodosaurus, yeah, 1680. So... Alicinosaurus has got higher attack. Obviously, it's not got better move sets or a better ability, so it's not worth it. But yeah, Theranodosaur attack has been increased. You don't even need the crits when you're doing 1680 base before anything, let's face it. Just saying. Anyway, another big, 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 big thing to cover before we go on to the release date. There is loads of changes in there. Check them out, obviously. Draco Ceratops. <laughs> <laughs> my poor little rat. Everyone calls it a rat. I think it's my rat. But it's no longer got Defense Shatter and Rampage. Oh no, it's only got Rampage. Attacks increased though. <laughs> I mean, okay, we don't have Defense Shattering. I mean, if I'm swapping in, they're not going to get a chance to drop an instant invincibility. They're not going to get a chance to drop a shield. So I won't switch in if they haven't got a shield. I won't switch in if their armor's too high to cover the health thing. It's just a new accommodation for it. But his attack's been raised anyway, so... Still useful. I would have liked a unique for him, but there we go. 
And finally, last but not least, where have I put it? I've lost it. I deleted it. <laughs> oh, there was a tab for it. Um, basically, it's coming out on the June the 25th, according to the forums, where they're saying that patch notes, um, they're sort of doing maintenance then. So, prepare yourself for June the 25th. This video is going to be up very late UK time, and very early, no, very, quite late American time, and early everyone else. So, hi! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have enjoyed the video, please make sure you do smash the like button down below. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and join Crazy Red Accounts. I'd super duper appreciate it. And of course, there's a playlist for Dress Up Alive where you can check out my progress, where there's a massive time jump, which is explained in two episodes ago. But thank you all so much for watching to me today. Have a nice day, and draw.